this video explain the uh, design for fire resistance of reinforced concrete structures using AS3600 section 5 provide the details about the fire resistance for reinforced concrete structures now before going in the details I like to provide the detail about fire resistance period that you can see uh, here fire resistance period that's um, that's written here fire resistance period now uh, fire resistance period is a classification of structural element for fire performance let's say someone provide the notation 60 60 60 it's in the minute and it's representing the first number representing structure adequacy and if you look at the structure adequacy uh, on the next page on close 5.2.9 it has structure adequacy for fire so basically your structure elements uh, or the reinforced concrete structure should have these three uh, different uh, resistance it should have a structure adequacy resistance for 60 minutes for example if you have wall beam or columns it should have a load so under the fire conditions these structure elements should resist this load uh, resist this load it should not um, reduce its strength due to the fire for 60 minutes uh, if it is a, a, in second number is integrating integrating meaning that whatever the structure element you have and you have fire in the one compartment in other compartments you should not have gas or flame passing through that element so for example if i produce if i have a crack here or any kind of a uh, small holes that will allow the gas and flame to pass through the other compartment for up to 60 minutes it should not happen that's the integrity resistance the next one the insulation one that's represent that if you have structure elements and if you have fire in the one compartment the heat transport the the, the heat let's say here uh, about 200 degrees celsius are reach uh, due to this fire in this um, compartments due to the insulation provided by the structure members it should not reach let's say 200 it should have a room temperature 30 degree celsius so for that scenarios for up to 16 minutes you should have provided that resistance so that is the fire resistance period that's uh, uh, that is also represented by fire resistance level so what is fire resistance level all these are different fire resistance level uh, adequacy integrity and insulation the insulation integrity definitions are given here uh, now if you are if you have a fire resistance period meaning that for particular period all these um, uh, if i have let's say 60 minutes fire resistance it means that uh, i should have a 60 minute resistance for adequacy i should have 60 re minute uh, resistance for integrity and i have 60 minutes resistance for for insulation that's the fire resistance period um, let's let's take an examples that will be more clear uh, uh, let's say I have uh, one example uh, prepared here. Now you have been assigned um, the task of evaluating the fire resistance of reinforced concrete structures based on specific period. The building is assigned a fire rating. So they, your surveyor will provide you these uh, details which is 60 minutes for integrity, 90 minutes for insulation and 120 minutes for structure adequacy and uh, various structure element. Your objective is to calculate minimum concrete cover required for fire resistance according to the guideline outline in Australian standards. So basically, we need to find up. Um, we, basically, we need to find this. Uh, uh, find the cover for concrete beams, cover for concrete columns, and cover for slabs. Uh, for beams, it has given reinforced concrete beams. It has a width of 500 millimeters. Assume that use of R10 fitments and 200 millimeters bar diameters. The beam is continuous. Calculate the minimum concrete cover needed to meet the fire resistance criteria for AS3600. Now, for AS3600, if I look at this one, close 5.4 uh, represent the uh, fire resistance for beam. Now, in this case, uh, you have a, uh, uh, some details given here. I highly encourage you to read through this one. Now, on, on this one, um, we have a uh, tables 5.4.1 tables that is the fire resistance period for structure adequacy now for beams uh, I know I mentioned this one that you need to have a uh, three different um, different uh, resistance criteria that you need to satisfy but for beam you just need to do the structure adequacy you don't need to do the integrity and insulation for example if I have a beam 
let's say there is a beam sitting on top of here small beam sitting on the top of wall now this beam this beam cannot provide integrity you can imagine that this beam is a is, is a tiny member it's not like a wall that provide the complete partitions between the two compartment it is the load carrying member so it does not um, it does not do the integrity meaning that if you have beam your your if you have fire the, your fire will go from one compartment it does not provide this integrity if you have beam it does not solve the purpose of insulations because it's not like wall where it is a partition between the one compartment to another compartment the beam will not provide the insulation so the oscillant standard recognize that so oscillant standards wants you to just design for structured adequacy therefore it mentions this one here structured adequacy for simply supported beams you can use this uh, this value frp look look at the standards generally want you to design minimum 30 minutes so if you if you if you have minimum 30 minutes that you need to design for and up to one 240 minutes that you can design for different combinations are given here um, you can use a normal computation little bit severe computations more severe comp uh, combinations and so on it's basically you can have a axis distance and uh, you have a width of the beam this is a minimum width and uh, this is the axis distance but we are going to use uh, these figures and for simply supported beam is this one and for uh, continuous beam again structural adequacy we are going to use these figures now in our in our examples i think uh, i have a solution here i mentioned all these ones so if i want to calculate the cover uh, we can have axis distance by the way the axis distance is the measurement from the center of the reinforcement to this edge so uh, that is definition is given here uh, from the center to this edge so cover basically is from these treatments to this point so if i use these figures figure number 5.4.1 for the continuous beam and that is for structure adequacy and for structure adequacy in our examples it has given 120 minutes um, fire resistance period so for 120 minutes uh, for 120 minutes here and uh, for um, uh, width of the beam is given uh, 500 we have width of the beam 500 120 it is axis distance 30 millimeters now if you if you if you if you know the cover then you can calculate the axis distance and you can calculate the minimum width as well so you can do it uh, opposite so if you know the cover um, you can calculate the uh, if you know the covers you can calculate the uh, minimum uh, width uh, so axis distance 30 millimeters coming from here minus this one is the half because we need to measure from this point to here so uh, this is the half of this one and the fitment dia is 10 millimeter so the cover would be 10, 10 millimeters so 10 millimeter cover is very small so you don't need to provide this 10 millimeter but this is the minimum covers that you you need to provide for fire resistance for durability you might need to check that you need to have a higher cover and as i mentioned we don't need to check for insulation and integrity for the beams and the standards knows that now uh, i forget to mention that these figures use when your beam has a uh, when your beam uh, is in the upper surface of the beam integrated with a slab force so if you have a slab and the upper surface of the beam is attached with the slab so only three surfaces are exposed to the fire then you use these figures but if your beam has a exposed to all four sides then you might need to satisfy this condition you just read through it and you need to work along with this along with these these figures now that is the first one now for the next one we can do the slab now for slab uh, we need to have a continuous slab and 12 reinforcement calculate the minimum concrete cover within the slab and now for slabs i think slabs is a different kind slab is a different kind meaning that it has a two uh, purpose let me find the uh, um, close for the slabs here you go so that is the close for the slabs uh, fire resistance period for slabs now as i mentioned slab is like a, like a wall slab is like a wall now it has a uh, structured adequacy and it has insulations uh, it does not have integrity that we need to satisfy it has insulations and structured adequacy as you can see now for insulation purpose uh, based on based on the fire resistance period you can provide this uh, thickness of the slab so for our examples the fire resistance uh, for insulations it is insulations for insulations we have 90 minutes 
so for 90 minutes we need to provide uh, 100 millimeters of of, of the slab uh, thickness so for insulations we can provide the minimum 100 um, 100 millimeter 100 millimeter thickness so that is the insulations now for uh, uh, for structure adequacy that is a structure adequacy one there are a couple of tables that we can use um, one for the flat plate that tables is given here and another one for uh, 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 for solid and hollow concept supported on beams and walls and one-way rib slabs um, uh, adequacy two-way simply supported rib slabs and um, and another tables is um, is a two-way continuous rib slabs now for our examples I believe that we have a need to use table 5.5.2 B and um, and because I think uh, we have continuous slab and we are falling in this category and for for structure adequacy we have about 120 minutes I believe uh, for structure adequacy we have 120 minutes so for that 120 minutes we can take a, a cover of uh, 20 and please note we don't provide the fitments in the slab so 20 take away 6 uh, we give you 40 minutes and 12 millimeters is given in our examples uh, that's uh, bar uh, that's bar diameter n12 now last one is the columns now columns like a beam like it does not provide the integrated insulation so we need to define the structure integrity so analyze a reinforced concrete column with a cross sections with 350 by day 50 column incorporate r2 and fitment 24 reinforcement determining the minimum concrete cover required to uh, for fire resistance and so on so uh, exposed to one side only and load level is given 0.4 so column is like um, column is uh, given in close 5.6 it's like a beam you does not need to provide like columns if i have a tiny column sitting here or tiny column sitting here it have a structure in, in adequacy integrities you can't uh, you can't stop your gas and flame going from one another compartment using the columns columns is not like a partition uh, members and insulation same thing if you have a column sitting in the middle of the compartments and the fires going in the one compartment for the second compartment column does not provide the insulation so therefore we don't need to satisfy like a beam you don't need to satisfy those two just a structure in really so uh, column exposed to the one side given in our examples I think um, uh, is given in our example somewhere um, uh, column exposed to the one side and load level 0.7 given and we are structured adequacy 120 minutes that is 120 minutes and for that case I think we can provide the oxys distance of uh, let me check my solution 35 and 24 Rio is given 24 bar diameter is given fitment is given uh, 12 millimeter fitments so 35 uh, this axis distance from this point to this point 35 take away 12 uh, that's uh, half diameters take away the fitment diameter so it will give you cover 11 millimeter so that is the minimum 11 millimeter covers that you need to you need to provide uh, thank you very much